around the world in different countries, there's a lot of um, discussion going on about reconfiguring the regulatory regime, the regulatory model. Um, the, the British have their format where you have the Bank of England, the FSA, you've got the Australians with, um, with a different model, um, you've got the Chinese with uh, institutional model as the um, Financial Stability Board calls it. Um, do you see regulatory reform as an important, in, in, in important part of, of um, creating a more stable financial system globally in going forward? Yes, regulatory reform is certainly part of it, but also international cooperation, because if, if we end up with too many and quite different regulatory systems, that wouldn't, that, wouldn't be, that wouldn't be good. But having said that, though, it's not a simple task to, to, to figure out what, in some sense, the optimal uh, regulatory system would, uh, would, would look like. And that's also something that actually changes over time. Is, is the Swedish model something that you would recommend generally? No, not necessarily. I mean, we have, one needs to be mindful of the fact that these, these, these here we are talking about slow moving matters. Uh, in our case, the FSA has uh, been an independent authority for, I think, about more than 100 years. And, and then that's what we are, that's what we are used to. In many other countries, in many other places, they have actually chosen to have supervision located inside the central bank. So it's, there's no, it's, there's not a given answer. There, there can, you can organize these things in, a, in an efficient way in many different ways, and that, that's uh, likely to vary from country to country. Given the different ins institutional forms in the different countries, to what extent would you say personalities play an important role in bringing life to the models that exist? Um, without really mentioning any one jurisdiction with any problems, but how would you say personalities give life to the Swedish model? Well, personalities personalities do play a role uh, in, in, in to work because to work to to work in the, in, in, in the sense that if you if you know the people around you, it's probably easier to do the work compared to if you don't if you don't know them at all. But having said that, at the same time, I do think that it's very very important when when one uh, organizes financial systems not to organize them around individual persons. Uh, you systems are supposed to last for a long time, and they are supposed to, in, in good cases, to be uh, put together in such a way that they are not dependent on individuals. Right, but in some cases of failure, you get a case where the central bank is doing what it's supposed to mm -hmm. be doing, the, the FSA is doing what it's supposed to be doing, but the, the, the systemic risk that, that results is because of the ball falling between the two. That is true, that is true, and, and this is sort of, this is really the, the, the hard part of it. To, on the one hand, to organize the whole system in such a way on, on the public sector side that, that you have clearly defined roles, that the individuals involved, the involved fully understand who, de, who has the right to decide what, when and why, and, and, and if you happen to have many different bodies, which is actually the case in many countries, then you need to have a clear framework within which these bodies are supposed to cooperate. Because clearly, if they don't cooperate at all, then then something is likely to fall uh, fall in, in in between the cracks. Right, Mr. English, you are a big proponent of regular regulatory regimes uh, cooperating on a regional basis, mm -hmm. and I think that the the history of the Baltic region, mm -hmm. just prior to you know the current crisis in Greece and Ireland, um, as an example of that. Uh, what is your thinking in terms of what needs to happen for regulat regulators across uh, countries, especially in connected economies? Um, to what extent do they need to develop uh, a working model uh, in terms of talking with each other? Well, the, the, issue is, the, the, the issue is kind of the following, and I'm not, not talking about, not about it from a sort of a, an EU, the European, uh, European, in a European context, but, but, but the reflections are sort of fairly general. Within Europe, we have been in favor of a free market for financial services, including cross-border uh, banking. That means that you can, you can grow your bank into any size, shape, and form, including the cross-border aspects of it. Now, at the same time, the regulatory frameworks and the supervisory frameworks have basically stayed national. And that 
that in my view creates an imbalance between the private sector and the public and, uh, and the public sector. Because once you get substantial cross-border banking, then if you have a problem, it just won't work to have the supervisors just doing their thing at the national level. They have to move with the banks and with the markets at, at, a, at a pace which is similar to what the banks, what the banks do themselves. But that's difficult to do because to get to that point, you have to cooperate and you have to see a bit of sovereignty and pass that on to, to uh, cross-border institutions. But at the same time, you collect lots of data on, on the related economies, on the institutions of these economies and so on. Give us a sense of your world view when you were looking at this data. I'm trying to draw from you the wealth of experience that you okay, let me let me use let me use the Baltic countries as an example. Yeah, the Baltic countries, in terms of sort of the banking sector, is, is, is uh, in, in all in, in the three Baltic countries, the banking sector is dominated by Swedish banks, more more or less. Market shares vary a bit, but but more. Or less. Now, in in this situation, we were sitting in Stockholm, really worried about what was going on in these three countries. But we just did not have the tools, because to stop it, that had to be handled at the national level in each individual country. We were talking about it, and we were warning about it, and, and we were talking and warning louder and louder, uh, but still the whole, thing, uh, the, the, the whole thing fell apart and created some serious difficulties in these, in these three countries. Clearly, clearly, it would have been better if we had had more uh, cross-country cooperation in such a way that these countries had, had taken measures in, in their own countries in order to make sure that, that this accident that happened uh, hopefully could have been avoided. But did you personally have to have a, 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 a sense of what you needed to look for or were you also on the learning curve? Um, as, the, as the crisis was... Well, we were sort of on the learning, learning curve when it comes to keeping track of what's going on abroad. I mean, we had our problems in the 90s, and that was essentially basically a domestic, domestic problem. It, it becomes more difficult when you start, start thinking hard about what's going on in, in another country. And then it, of course, also gets more difficult to get, get the right information that you need. And, and, and then you need to cooperate, and you need to do the stress testing, and you need to do it cross-border, and, and, and all the rest. Are of there it. parallels between what's happening in Greece today and what happened in, in the Nordic countries two years ago? Uh, no, not, not, not really. One, one parallel is what, is what has been going on in, 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 in Latvia, because Latvia is a country with some serious difficulties, and they have a fixed exchange rate against the euro, and they have had a serious uh, fiscal problem. Uh, what's going on in Greece is, is, is basically a very difficult situation on the, on, the, on, the, on the fiscal side. And that does not hold at all when it comes to the Nordic countries. The Nordic countries, uh, we have had all sorts of fiscal problems in the past. Uh, but this time around we look pretty good compared to many others. Final question, what is your sense of the role of markets in, in the resolution of bank risk management? Uh, you know the markets are being beaten up for for being you know mercenary and all that basically. But um, the role of derivatives, the role of uh, the market being a risk management mechanism for banks. But to say markets are to some extent the risk mechanism for banks. You need to be aware of the fact that that sometimes markets function the worst when you need them the most. And if you are not aware of that. Uh, then you can run into some serious, serious difficulties, and you need to be aware of that. that, that that's how, how sometimes that's how it goes. Yeah, Mr. Ingres, uh, so much, so little time to discuss. So, so much that you personally you know, learned over the years. I hope to be able to interview you again. Thank you very much. Thank you.